So the other day while I was at the store, it dawned on me. I was like, we go out and buy all these spice powders and we use them from wherever they come from, but couldn't we just, you know, make them? So yes, that is right, we are making our own spices. We're not like growing our own star anise or anything like that, but we are gonna learn how to make spices out of everyday things that we buy. Now there are many ways to go about this. There's not a ton of alternatives, unfortunately, but the main thing that we need to talk about is using a dehydrator. So knowing that subject, obviously it just made sense for me to partner with my old homies. We've talked about them so many times, literally since the beginning, like since my first bread recipe. I'm super excited to announce that I'm partnered with Broad and Taylor to put out this video using their Sahara dehydrator, which is super dope. We'll talk about it in a second, but we'll get into all the nitty gritty. But long story short, we're making our own spices. So with all that said, let's do this, shall we? So I'll have some alternatives, but I recommend using dehydrator for this. You guys know that I've been a big fan of Broad and Taylor way before this sponsorship, and I actually really love this thing. I never had a dehydrator because there was nowhere to put it, but this thing folds and goes anywhere. The link for it will be in the description, but whatever you do, just make sure your dehydrator is set up. I'm opening mine up, putting my shelves in, we're good to go. So let's start off by talking about something a little more known. You know those herbs that might end up staying in the crisper in your fridge and then dying out there and you gotta throw them away? Well, why not just make them into dried herbs instead of wasting your money and buying them and then blah, 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 you get the point. These are probably the easiest out of all of them. All you gotta do is take whatever herb you want, put them on your drying mat, and then place them in your dehydrator at 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius for five to 10 hours. Sturdy herbs like rosemary, thyme, you can alternatively just tie those to a string of twine and then hang them and let them air dry. And they'll actually dry in the open air. Then just Strip the herbs from the stem and well, there you go. You got dried herbs. You can also crush them up or blend them if you want. I like to leave them whole. Let's talk about making chili powders out of literally any chili that you want. Here I'm using serrano chilies. All you gotta do is just cut them open, strip them of their membrane and seeds, just separate them out. I actually like to dehydrate both. That way I have one super spicy one and then one that's more just pepper flavored and lay them on your drying mat and dehydrate at 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius until completely dry. And anywhere between about six to 12 hours. They should snap when they're done. Then just toss them in a blender and then make Make sure you're blending the seeds separately from the flesh. And be very careful when opening your blender because it makes the air a little bit spicy. Well, opening this is spicy. <coughs> be <coughs> oh my god. And that's it, you've got chili powder out of anything. Serrano powder is amazing, trust. Now let's talk about reducing waste really quick. You can dehydrate a lot of different kinds of vegetable and fruit skins to make a flavored powder. The two that I wanna talk about are either tomato skins or onion skins. Yes, you can absolutely use onion skins. Just make sure that there's no like dirt or anything yucky on them. So to do that, you're just gonna place them on your drying mat and then dry them at 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius for about five to eight hours or until super duper dry. Then just like the rest, blend until you get a nice smooth powder and that's it. These are just two examples of ways that you can use stuff that you usually throw away to make a spice. Just do me a favor and make sure to Google if it's edible before you do that. And while we're at it, let's talk about garlic powder. It's really easy. You literally just slice garlic. I did it on a mandolin. Place it on your drying sheet, but make sure it has a silicone mat over it or something like that. Then the same temperature as anything else, 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius for eight to 12 hours or until super dry and crisp. Blend, powder, garlic powder, done. And let's talk about mushroom powder. This stuff is so potent. You can add umami and mushroom flavor to literally anything. And you can use any mushroom for this. The thing I like about it is you can also use the mushroom scrap. Sometimes I feel like people throw away the stem or if the stem on a mushroom is chewy, you use all the mushroom, nothing gets wasted. All you gotta do is se separate the tops from the base of anything. Make sure that they lay somewhat flat. Place them on your dehydrating mat and then just dehydrate them at 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius for four to eight hours. And then once that's done, you just toss them in a blender and blend them until they're a powder. And well, that's it, mushroom powder, that's, that's it. You can add this to meats or marinades. And if you add it to risotto, you get an instant mushroom risotto. So there you go. Now, last but not least is citrus zest. You can do this with any kind of citrus. I did lemons and limes. And you're gonna wanna do these at the absolute lowest temperature. I did them at 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius for about four to eight hours or until completely dry. I actually mixed the two together and just kind of lightly pounded them together until they were a little bit finer. This goes great mixed with other spices. It's not quite as strong in flavor up front, but once it gets rehydrated, it's actually quite nice. So hopefully this was something a little bit insightful. Obviously this is not an exhaustive list. There's a million things you can do. I'm just trying to get you guys started on the path. 
you know? I didn't really breathe much when I was saying that, but you get the point. Now, since we still got the dehydrator whipped out, let's sample these spices on some jerky. First, you're gonna want to really thinly slice a two and a half to three pound or 1100 to 1300 gram eye round roast. Real, real thin, as thin as you can. You need a sharp knife. If you need, have your butcher do this for you, the thinner, the better. Well, maybe not paper thin, but you know, as thin as you can. Now, the marinade is really simple. It's gonna be one cup or 236 milliliters of soy sauce, half a cup or 118 milliliters of honey, half a cup or 118 milliliters of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons or four grams of dried thyme, one tablespoon or seven grams of mushroom powder, one tablespoon or seven grams of garlic powder, and two teaspoons or five grams of serrano powder. Now you might be like, Josh, that's not two teaspoons. Yeah, we'll mix it up and look, there you go. I added more, all right, you happy? Now once all that's mixed together, just take your beef, sort of slap it all in a container, pour your marinade over, make sure that it's completely submerged. If you need to add something on top, some sort of weight to keep it down, that would be wise. And then just cover it and place it in the fridge overnight. Now once that's done marinating, just lightly dab it off so it doesn't drip all over the place. Place it on your dehydrator mats and dehydrate at 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius for 8 to 12 hours or until nicely dried. Now it shouldn't completely snap in half, but it should definitely snap and not completely break. If it's still raw, you got a problem, brother. And for those of you worried about bacteria, for one, the salt should take care of that, and for two, your dehydrator needs to be accurate enough to go that hot. If it doesn't, then add a teaspoon of curing salt. Anyway, store your beef jerky in an airtight container and place it in the refrigerator, and it will last a long time. I know refrigerator, what's the whole point of dehydrating it? It's just an extra safety precaution, all right? But do you wanna know what else is an extra safety precaution? B-roll. guys and that is it so homemade spices and by homemade spices I mean literally you took a flipping jalapeno and you made some flipping ha ha jalapeno powder that's a homemade flipping spice dude I'm obviously in a weird mood right now uh <laughs> really quick just a huge thank you to our homies at Broad and Taylor you know that I've been talking about them forever literally like way way back I'm just super thankful to be able to work with them and you guys have been the reason for that so thank you to them thank you to you their dehydrator is gonna be in the links in the description be sure to click it and check it out if you want to get yourself one Christmas is coming up they just dropped their prices you know what to do um in terms of updates for me that honestly, I don't know when this video is being posted, so I'm gonna try and not add anything else to this to not confuse the timeline. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.